you know, this is the oldest European inspired, inspired building in, in Arizona. I think uh, living in Tucson, we kind of take it for granted, that quaint little church on the edge of town. But this is probably one of the most significant cultural sites in the Americas. I mean, this is the northernmost point of Christendom when this area of the country was part of the Spanish Empire. And you know, the flags of four countries have flown over Mission San Javier. We've had the Spanish, the Mexican, the US, and also the Tohono O'odham Nation. So this is sort of a, an intersection of very many communities, very many cultures, traditions, and the building itself is we believe the crown jewel of the Sonoran Mission um, complex. The mission has definitely been an important place for me. Um, just as a, I mean, less from a religious standpoint, but as, a, as an icon in the area. And it always felt like it's a place that we visit and bring people. And I think you feel the power of this place when you visit. So it's not like going to a historic site and just kind of look around. Like there's this calm that happens here and it's a place of worship and it's a place of reverence for a lot of people. And I think you feel that um, when you visit. Well, welcome to the mission. Um, there's a lot going on here at the moment, as you can see. Uh, behind me, the East Tower project is well underway. Basically what the team is doing is removing layers of um, cement-based plaster from the building. Um, some years ago, it was determined that Portland-based cement in the plaster is not a compatible form when it, it's applied to the adobe, um, the adobe brick underneath and that even though this is fired adobe, it still degrades. And so getting rid of the Portland cement and putting back the, the original lime-based plasters allows the building to breathe. And so that's really important. Um, when this building gets wet, some of that water flows into the building. And when the cement-based plasters were there, it had no way of getting out except seeking the lowest point through gravity, which is often the interiors of the domes of the building. Well, the walls where, of course, if you've been to San Javier, walls, domes, everything is painted. And so that painting was very much being um, impacted by water intruding into the interior of the mission. So this is the last section of the mission to have the cement-based renders taken away. And as I say, it's an exciting time for us because we've been waiting for this project for many, many years. Conservation is, um, it's a, a science where one is looking to preserve what's there, not put back things that were not there. And so in um, the work that's going on in the tower behind us at the moment, all of those decorative elements are all not exact or precise. And so we're making sure that we follow the lines of the original craftsmen to make sure that when all of the scaffolding comes down, that everything that makes San Javier special and unique is retained. And of course, it's the reason why we're not going and putting back a new dome and lantern on the top, because that's the way people have experienced the mission for, for two and a half centuries almost. So while we're wrapping up um, a very exciting project, studying uh, the facade behind me, and when we talk about the facade, we're talking about the Facade retablo, so that's the sculpted ornamental part that's kind of um, a pinkish tan. And so, you know, we just spent a month with different conservators um, and consultants kind of taking a close look at the facade. It's one of the few um, parts of the original where there's still original finishes on it. Um, trying to better understand what existing conditions are, what needs to happen for its conservation. And so the, the facade that you see today, like when you're looking at it now, is largely the product of a 1950s era restoration campaign. 
um, and we have some really interesting documentation of that campaign. There's like a great scrapbook that they put together kind of detailing what they did and recording their intent. And we know they were very serious about keeping it looking the way it looked. They wanted to, they didn't want to alter it. They didn't want to take it back. They just kind of wanted to um, protect what was there. Um, and what they ended up doing, common to do in the 50s, was giving it a thin skim coat with some concrete-based or cement-based stucco. Um, it's tinted this pink to kind of match what was there. But what we're learning when we look at it really closely and kind of map some of the original pigments and finishes is that it actually would have been mostly white. Um, the, the flat surfaces would have been coated with a white lime wash. And once you get up close and personal with it, you can see there's still quite a bit left. And then the relief would have been painted with, um, we found three pigments. We've got an iron oxide red, um, an ochre yellow, and a manganese black that would have been blended with the lime to kind of make a dark blue. At a place like San Javier, it's um, one of the most historic buildings in the state, but it's also a living church. So the way, the approach you take to its conservation and preservation needs to take all of that into account. And it needs to be based on some community input based on scientific knowledge of, you know, what was, what is there, what risks are, you know, posed to the building in it as it is now and what we can do to help mitigate those. So when we're talking about the interior conservation work, um, what we're working with is wall paintings on virtually every surface of this building. Um, and so those are paint that's applied to a plaster wall um, and it's affected by different environmental conditions being uh, an earthen building the mission's constructed of kind of bricks that would have been made on site so they're fairly soft with lime sand plaster and moisture moves in and out of the building we have the history of it the exterior being coated in cement stucco which is less permeable um, which kind of forces moisture through the interior walls and causes some issues with the painted surfaces so it's kind of a constant cycle of upkeep inside it's not really it's not like you can serve these paintings once and they're done forever so a lot of Tim and Matilde's work is cyclical going going back and we try to stay on we try to stay on a schedule but it's <laughs> very challenging so we really are working with traditional uh, uh, materials and we are really, how to say, non-invasive. We do minimal intervention that needs. And uh, most of our, uh, the, the products that we use are reversible. So whoever comes behind us uh, uh, is going to be able to, to remove it. The thing is not the best thing to do. And another thing that we do and it's very important to do is uh, a whole report before and after photos, during, what we did, where, why, with what. And then the person who comes after us is going to know perfectly what, what we did. One of the problems of this church is the, the humidity and the humidity uh, leads to termites. We have a big problem of termites, but the ones that go uh, on, on the ground. And then this, uh, this wood was really wasted. It was really, really bad. And then over the years, they will keep putting uh, wax, retainings, everything. You can see here, we left a witness patch. I don't know if you can see. And then the people thought it was just black, and it was wasted. There was no uh, no way to conserve. But we we were <laughs> I had a little we way to look stubborn, and we said that we could save it. And really, we we were working I think four to six months in both alta railing, alta railings, cleaning and stabilizing the wood. We in Arizona should be so proud that we have this building in our center. Um, it means a huge amount, not only to the local community, but I think for people throughout the country, there's a special connection to San Javier. People who visit oftentimes never forget. We get letters all the time saying, oh my gosh, 
you know, I visited when I was 10 or 12 and you know, here's $50 because I just can't get it out of my mind. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's the most significant historic building other than the indigenous buildings that were built by the Native Americans and we should be so proud that we can contribute to its conservation and maintenance.